Welcome back to our learning session. This is our last learning episode for quarter 3. Congratulations, you have made it home. For this session, our most essential learning competency is you can use the periodic table and predict the chemical behavior of an element. So, for our learning objective, Recognize the scientists behind the development of periodic table. Number two, learn how the elements are arranged in the periodic table of elements. And understand the periodic trends in the periodic table of elements. In our previous episode, you have learned the atomic structure. In an atom, there are neutrons, electrons, and proton. Also, you have determined the atomic mass and the atomic number of an element using the number of protons and neutrons. Now, as we proceed to our lesson, let us begin with a simple task. You are just going to identify the picture if it is metal, non-metal, or metal. For example, clouds that have oxygen belong to non-metal. So let's get ready, click start. What am I? The answer is metal. Nice. Next, what am I? The answer is metal. Very good. Last one, the answer is non-metal. Great job! Silicon, magnesium, and chlorine are the chemical elements that can be found in the periodic table of elements. So, for this session, we are going to tackle the periodic table of elements. Are you familiar with this? Someone said that for him, the periodic table is like a family photograph. It is carefully arranged to show the relationships of all its members. It includes the traditional and dysfunctional members of an extended family. Many get along well, others are aloof and snobbish, and yet others react violently to each other. Relating to the family photograph, let us learn how the elements are assembled in periodic table. Here is the modern periodic table of elements. The periodic table is a graphical layout of 118 discovered chemical elements, organized into rows and columns according to their basic characteristics. The table allows scientists to easily grasp the relationships and similarities among the elements, which are the building blocks of all matter. Why is the periodic table important? The periodic table is one of the most important tools in the history of chemistry. When it comes to history, we must first appreciate the scientists who conceptualized how the chemical elements were put together to aid modern students and scientists in predicting the types of chemical reactions that a given element is likely to participate in. Did you know that the idea of elements first came about in 300 BC? The great Greek philosopher Aristotle conceived an idea that everything on earth was made up of these elements. In ancient times, elements like gold and silver were readily accessible. However, the elements that Aristotle chose were earth, water, fire, and air. Until the year in 1789, French chemist Antoine Lavoisier tied grouping the elements as metals and non-metals. Forty years later, German physicist Johann Wolfgang Dobrinier observed similarities in physical and chemical properties of certain elements. He arranged them in groups of three in increasing order of atomic weight and called them triads. 
observing that some properties of the middle elements such as atoms weight and density approximated the average value of these properties in the other two in each planet. British chemist John Newland was the first to arrange the elements into a periodic table with increasing order of atomic mass. He found that every eight elements had similar properties and called this the law of octane. In 1869, Russian chemist Dmitry Mendeleev created the framework that became the modern periodic table. Another mayor produced a version of the periodic table similar to Mendeleev in 1870. He left gaps for undiscovered elements but never predicted their properties. In 1894, Sir William Ramsey, a British physical chemist, co-discovered four gases, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and showed that they, with helium and radon, formed an entire family of new elements, the noble gases. In 1913, English physicist Henry Mosley then rearranged the elements in the periodic table based on atomic numbers. Glenn Seabood is best known for discovering in February 1944. He is also author of Lanthanides and Actonide Concept of Heavy Element Electronic Structure. The periodic table has done too many changes since Dimitri Mendeleev grew up his original design in 1859. The periodic table was used to predict the chemical and physical properties of elements in the gaps on the table. Today, the table can be used to predict the properties of elements yet to be discovered. So, let us be grateful to them. Rather than memorizing facts and figures for each element, students and scientists can learn a lot both about elements and activity. Whether it is likely to conduct electricity, whether it is hard or soft, and many other properties by simply looking at the table. Now, let us answer a few questions to check if there is an impact of learning the history of the periodic table. Question 1. Who classified the known elements into eight groups? Correct. John Mullen. Question 2. Who created the periodic table and how it is organized? Good job! Dimitri Mendeleev by increasing atomic weight. Lastly, question number 3. Who discovered the noble gases, neon, krypton, and xenon? Very good! William Ramsey. So, how are the elements arranged in the modern periodic table of elements? What it look like? There are seven rows of the periodic table which are called periods. Element atomic number increases moving from left to right across a period. Elements toward the left side of a period are metals, while those on the right side are non-metals. Moving down a period on the table adds a new electron shell. Each period number indicates the number of particles for the new element in that row. For instance, period 1 includes elements that have one atomic orbital where electrons spin. Period 2 has two atomic orbitals, period 3 has three, and so on up to period 7. The columns of elements are called groups or families. Group contains elements with similar properties. Elements with a group share a valence electron configuration or those electrons in the outermost orbital shell. As an example, elements in group 8A all have a full set of 8 electrons in the highest energy orbital. For instance, all the group 18 elements are inert gases, meaning they don't react with other elements. Blocks are sections of the periodic table that indicate the outer electron subshell of the atom. The S block includes the first two groups, the alkaline metals and the alkaline earth metals, hydrogen and helium. The P block 
include groups 13 to 18. The D block includes groups 3 to 12, which are transition methods. The F block consists of the two periods below the main body of the periodic table, the lanthanides and actinides. The majority of chemical elements are metals. Metals tend to be shiny, hard, conductive, and capable of forming alloys. Non-metals tend to be soft, colored, insulators, and capable of forming compounds with metals. Metalloids display properties intermediate between those of metals and non-metals. There is a rough staircase pattern, starting at boron and going through silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, tellurium, and polonium that identify the metal. Our last topic is the trends in periodic table. The variation of properties versus position on the periodic table is called periodic trends. Periodic trends are specific patterns that are present in the periodic table that illustrate different aspects of a certain element, including its size and its electronic properties. Major periodic trends include electronegativity, ionization energy, electron affinity, atomic radius, and metallic character. Electronegativity is a property that measures the tendency of an atom to attract electrons to form a band. It was created by measuring the band energy of the different elements joined by covalent backing. This is observed through periodic trends. As the further right of a period and higher up a group are observed to have increased values in electronegativity. Note that the noble gases do not have an electronegativity. This periodic trend excludes the noble gases, group 18, ionization energy, the minimum amount of energy required to remove an electron from a neutral atom's outermost electron shell in the gaseous phase is called the ionization energy. This property is describing the difficulty of removing an electron. The ionization energy increases further right down the period and higher up a group as more energy is required to remove a tightly bonded electron from the atom. An example of high ionization energy is in helium as it has a very small atomic radius with positive 2 charge present in the nucleus. This allows for electrons to be retained as a result of this attractive force. Reactivity Reactivity describes the ability of a molecule or atom to undergo a chemical reaction, followed by a release in energy. Reactivity is dependent on the classification of elements, metals and non-metals, as they both have different periodic trends. The reactivity of metals increases further left along a period and further down the group. On the other hand, reactivity in non-metals increases further right down a period and further up a group. The most highly reactive element to be observed is cesium, as it spontaneously reacts with air and water. Electron affinity. Electron affinity is a property describing the tendency of a neutral atom to gain an electron in order to form a negative ion. In this process, energy is released also known as exothermic process, including noble gases. A trend is observed as elements further right a period and higher up a group have an increased electron affinity. Atomic radius is a term describing the distance between an atom's nucleus and its outermost electron shell. Several factors affect this distance, including the number of an element and the number of electron shells. Through periodic trends, the atomic radius increases in size further left of a period and lower down a group. Following this pattern, a cesium is shown to have the largest atom. Now we are done! The next learning task is to arrange the chemical element according to the specified periodic trends. Task 1. Using a periodic 
table predict the order of increasing atomic radius for the following set of elements? The answer is correct. Task 2. Based on position in the periodic table, which element of the following pairs has the higher first ionization energy? Great job, learners! Let us summarize our lesson. The periodic table of the elements is one of science's most powerful icons, a single document that consolidates much of our chemistry knowledge. Science is a mix of logic and creativity. Men live through these qualities in the production of the periodic table of the elements. The periodic table of the elements groups elements with their similar properties together by arranging them in order of atomic number. The majority of the elements are metals. Periodic trends are distinct patterns found in the periodic table that depict various aspects of a certain element, such as its size and electrical properties. Major periodic trends include electronegativity, ionization energy, electron affinity, atomic radius, and metallic color. Scientists are continuously attempting to find new materials and learn more about the qualities of those that already exist. People with determination are those who get up and keep going, who learn from what went wrong and adjust course and who believe in themselves despite all obstacles. Thank you for watching until the end. I hope you have learned something new. Keep on learning while staying at home. See you on the next learning episode. This is Teacher Marley.